It is late afternoon in Nabadwip, a small city in West Bengal in India. A diminutive elderly lady in a white sari is walking down the street with cars passing by. She's struggling against the scorching sun while begging for some money from whoever she encounters. On her two-kilometer walk, not a single coin is given. Some even turn away as she walks past. The apparent disdain doesn't come from her begging for money, but from the fact that she is a widow. Gary Berman got home without a single rupee. The 70-year-old widow is resting after her exhausting journey and starts telling us her story. She told us that this house was built by her husband. Her normally proud voice starts to tremble when she mentions his death three years ago. Since her husband passed away, she's been struggling to make a living. She begged for a cleaning job, which didn't earn her enough money to buy food. Anyway, once the owner of the house found out that she was a widow, she was fired right away. They didn't want her to touch anything in the house, as they believed that widows could bring bad luck. Life after losing a husband is particularly horrible for Indian women who are considered by their society to be possessions of the men. This used to be a home for Gary, her husband and their son. Once their son got married, the family grew even bigger. The daughter-in-law and their kids have become new members of the family. Everything went well until her husband's death. When Gary became a widow, her status changed. She had to move to a small shack outside the house. A one-person sized litter is covered with old cloth. All appliances are laid there on top. A green mosquito net is loosely folded by the wall. Next to the litter is a rusty fan. The front is open because this is part of the corridor of the house. But that she moved out of her own volition. Gary is considered fortunate to at least have a place to stay because most widows in India are kicked out of their home. Widows are seen as a bad omen. The occupants of a house with a widow living inside will soon face bad luck or death, so they believe. Widows must be evicted for the safety of other house occupants. Many families choose to force their daughter-in-law out of their house because they fear that their late son's fortune would be in the hands of the daughter-in-law instead. Prachin kal thikhe hi amra dekhte bachi jeet badi te asubida hule, ba na pusha le, tarra bolche amake kashi pathi de, brinda bani pathi de, ba nobodhi pe pathi de. Amade je upunnas tu punnas gulo te amra jeeta dekhte pai, badi je gulo mohi lada, bishesh kore mohi lada. বিধবা মহিলা সেটা মা হতে পারে ঠাকমা হতে পারে পিসিমা হতে পারে এগুলো এগুলো মোটামুটি সতেরোশো খ্রিস্টাব্দের শেষ দিক থেকে এরকম পাওয়া যাচ্ছে যে তারা ওসব জায়গায় যেতে চাচ্ছে ওসব জায়গায় গেলে তারা যে কোনো একটা ঠাকুর বাড়ি বা একটা আশ্রমে তারা থাকবে তারা তাদের যেটুকু পারবে শ্রম দেবে তার বিনিময়ে তাদের থাকা খাওয়ার একটা নিশ্চিত ব্যবস্থা Indian women grow up as a possession of their parents. Then they become their husband's possession once they marry. Their value is tied to their husband. Once the husband is gone, their value is gone too. No education, no job, no income. 
Their life is not so different from a leaking boat stranded at sea, ready to sink at any moment. Custom and practice towards widows in India, which leads to cutting of ties and disdain, do nothing but drag those stranded boats down to the bottom of the ocean. Once evicted from their own home, ashrams in Nabadwip and in other cities are islands where these widows can hang on to life of a sort. In the Krishna temple in Nabadwip, bhajan chants or the prayers could be heard harmonizing with musical instruments. Usually, the chanting is done by priests and pilgrims, but here, a group of widows are chanting and playing the instruments. Nabadwip is the birthplace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who many Indians believe to be the reincarnation of Krishna, one of the most revered gods in Hinduism. Considered sacred, the city has been a destination for religious studies, a sacred place, and a final destination for many people. Among those who have journeyed here are widows from India, Bangladesh, and Nepal. For over 300 years, Nabadwip has been the final refuge of these women, earning the city the nickname of the Widow Town. Widows who've moved here make a living by earning a little money from trivial jobs, begging, or even working as prostitutes. Some reside in a social center. Some choose to be in ashrams or rent a small room, while some just sleep on the street on a piece of canvas. However, there is one activity they all do every day. At seven o'clock every morning, these widows gather at the pavilion to register their names and receive a coin. They then start chanting and playing the musical instruments to praise Krishna. At around 11 o'clock, the staff come to collect the coins in exchange for a meal to sustain them for another day. The ashram is giving these widows a home and meals in exchange for their chants of worship. For the poor, donations of money might be an easier way out, but the ashram has their own way of providing help and support through religion. <laughs> Giving money is definitely easier than preparing hundreds of kilograms of food every day. But having them here chanting the name of Krishna repeatedly is also a way to cleanse their minds. The food the ashram gives them is also prepared as an offering to Krishna. So, in fact, these widows are having the food provided by Krishna. At the end of the chant, a hot meal is brought out to them. The ashram manager's announcement that the food is ready is just like the voice of God calling out to those who are waiting in hunger. The widows all stand up together and start singing a song to thank Krishna. Once the song finishes, each of them brings out their own choice of containers, ranging from lunch boxes to plastic bags, and start lining up for the food. Today's meal is steamed rice, dal curry with potatoes and dried soybeans. Gary is one of the widows who came here today for the chanting and the food. She told us that she would take this food to share with her son and his family too. Once being served with the food, each of them goes their own separate way. Some remain close by while they finish their meal. Some walk back to their residence behind the ashram. One of those is Mukti Rai, a 70-year-old widow from Bangladesh. After her husband passed away when she was just 40 years old, her two children refused to take care of her. They were unwilling to take her in and kept pushing her from one to another. There are several widow towns in India. Mukti chose to come to Nabadwip with all that's left of her possessions. 
She was lucky that the ashram had a place for her. Despite some loneliness, being able to bring herself to this sacred city and live here during her final days is blessing enough for her. Mukti told us that she's happy here. This place has given her food and clothes. The situation of widows in Bangladesh is the same as those in India. They no longer have a place in society. Mukti is living in a tiny room with six other widows. The marked and fading images of Krishna stuck to the walls are one of the few things they can hang on to in their remaining days. A few appliances are piled up together. Their beds are rice sacks collected from the ashram's pantry. One of Mukti's roommates is Rega Pamanik. Her husband died in a car accident six years ago. Her mother-in-law blamed her as the cause of the bad luck that took his life. Rega was kicked out of her husband's house in Calcutta and ended up here. She chose to come to Nabadwip, knowing that it's the destination for many helpless widows. For widows who have no job, no income, no family, and nothing but rejection from society, at least they can have a place to sleep, free food, and they might even find friends in those who face the same fate. Her life here is still difficult and different from what it used to be. The only thing that keeps her going through each day is a photograph of her husband, the only photo of him she has left. Life is hard, but whenever she feels like giving up, she takes out the picture of her husband, ignoring any laughter from her roommates. She still feels that her husband is with her every day. An ancient Indian practice known as sati or suti requires widows to sacrifice themselves by leaping onto their late husband's funeral pyre as an act of true love from a dutiful wife. It's also believed that the husband will surely rest in heaven if this is done. If a wife refuses to do so, she might get thrown onto the pyre instead. That's not far from murder. When India was the jewel in the crown of the British Empire, this horrendous practice was banned. Though the practice is no longer carried out, the attitude towards widows in India remains. They must don a white sari made of coarse cloth to display mourning over their husband's death. They have to shave their heads and wear no jewelry because the husband's death means they cannot wear anything decorative. They are forbidden from eating meat, food that provides heat and garlic, which are believed to boost libido because they should remain faithful to their late husband. They are not allowed to participate in celebrations or ceremonies at any cost. Any household with a widow will keep her grounded until the ceremony is over. Even their shadow is considered a bad omen and evil. This belief is widespread, even in a widow town like Nabadwip, a home to which thousands of widows have fled. <laughs> the status of widows in India is bound by an ancient belief that has been upheld and passed on until today. 
The social structure has placed men at an almost angel-like status, and women as their possessions. Hence, women are oppressed and dominated. Shami Marajar Poreo Jodi Agir Motoi Poshak Purichot Pore Shaz Goz Kore Shairokumir Mas Mangshu Itta Ditta Di Kawada Kore Tar Shurire Jovan Dirkokal Stai Habe Poropurush Dara Christo Habe Shomaji Akta Obokoi Akta Daka Debe A Yakta Bapor Tautilo Jat Joto Taratarita Jovanta Nosto Hejai Tarjuni Kritchota Shadon Itta Ditta Di Bidi Bidan Egulo Kora Hetila Though Gary's life is considered better than many others in her situation, because she wasn't forced out of her home. Behind the smile of this 70-year-old widow are frequent thoughts of taking her own life. However, she can only think of it with no actual action, since suicide is also believed to prevent her from going to heaven, which means that she won't see her husband forever. What's keeping her alive these days is getting up to go to ashram in the morning, then praying at night and begging the gods to finally take her life. i <laughs> দিবে কেউ আমি ঠাকুরের কাছে কি প্রার্থনা করব আমি তাহলে বলবো যে আমার শেষের দিনে ঠাকুর তুলে নাও আমি আর সহ্য করতে পারছি না এইটাই তো বলবো তাছাড়া আমার আর কি চাওয়ার আছে বলো Gary is not the only one who asks the gods to end her life all the widows here at the ashram give us the same answer they all wish for the end of their life এখন আমাদের ঈশ্বরের কাছে ইচ্ছা হচ্ছে যে আমাদের এই দেহটাকে তিনি পূরণ করে যেমন দিয়েছে তেমনি এখন আমাদের নিলে আমরা শান্তি পেয়ে যাই আর আমাদের কিছু আশা নেই আশা করে আমাদের আর কিছু নেই কেন এ তো আর কিছু কাজ করবে না ভগবানের সাথে বড় কথা বল ভগবান তুমি নিয়ে যাও আর থাকবো না এই বর্ষাব আর কোনো বন নাই যে জীবনে থাকতে কি হবে কিছু হবে না Since they're all here waiting for the day, it doesn't matter anymore if death comes tomorrow or even today. Maybe it is better, since death also brings an end to the hardship they're facing. The practice of sati or suti in which widows leap onto their dead husband's funeral pyre has been banned now for over 200 years. The only choice left for these widows is to travel to ashrams in different cities around India. Though their husbands may be long gone, the society refuses to relieve them of their duties. Only death can relieve them. But until then, they're just trapped in this living hell. <laughs> 